People often say that you can learn a lot about life through sports. So in regards to the last night's Kansas City Chiefs and Buffalo Bills game, here are the things that I pondered, my top three life lessons that were demonstrated by that game. Number one, what we remember in life is usually what happened last. So what we remember this morning, or what everyone's talking about this morning, is the fact that the Buffalo's, Buffalo Bills defense blew it. They blew the game. They could not stop Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs from scoring in the last 13 seconds of the game and then during overtime, and that is true. But what people are not remembering is that Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs defense couldn't stop Buffalo either. But no one's talking about that. They're only talking about what happened last because of they let Kansas City tie the game with 13 seconds left, but also then what happened in overtime and the whole situation of overtime that they couldn't stop them and thus Kansas City scored a touchdown and the game was over. So the GOAT, no, not, well, the GOAT, not the greatest of all time GOAT, but the GOAT as in the, the person who stinks the most right now is the defensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills or the coaches of the Buffalo Bills but because they couldn't stop Kansas City. But no one's talking about how bad Kansas City's defense played against Buffalo. They couldn't stop Buffalo either. It just so happened because of the coin flip and how the game ended that people are remembering how bad Buffalo's defense is, but they're not remembering how bad Kansas City's defense was. And I think that colors the outcome of how people feel about the game and whether you're the, the GOAT, not in a good way, not the greatest of all time, whether you're the GOAT because you blew it or whether you're the hero. And that happens in, in life a lot. I remember when I used to teach dancing, I was told very early on, I was instructed very early on, don't teach a new move at the end of the lesson. Why is that? Because if someone doesn't get the new move too well, if they fail on the new move at the end of the lesson, that's what they're gonna remember. They're not gonna remember the 95% of the lesson that they did really, really well. They're gonna dwell and ruminate on that 5% that they didn't get right, which happened last because that's what we remember. You always wanna end on a good note. You don't want a customer <laughs> to leave the dance studio with a negative image of themselves, a negative perspective of themselves. You want it to be positive because that'll bring them back. If they start to form the story of themselves that they stink and they can't get anything, that's not actually real. That's not the reality of it. They couldn't get just the last move, but the first 95% of the lesson was really good. So the point is humans, you can take this just into your daily life. Humans will always remember what happened most recently. It's called recency, uh, recency bias. Number two, life doesn't always have satisfying endings. The overtime rule, whatever you think about it, the game didn't have a satisfying ending. Granted, if you're a Kansas City Chief fan, it has a satisfying ending in the sense that you won. But was it really satisfying? Did that really feel like a proper way to end what such an amazing game between two amazing quarterbacks? Uh, I don't think anyone's completely satisfied by it, but that's life. Endings are not always, we always want the happy ending. We always want an ending that is final, that gives you finality. Uh, a sense of closure, a satisfying end. That's not usually how life is. The experiences of life and the moments of life, they come together and they fall apart. They come together and they fall apart. Relationships, personal relationships, business relationships, family relations, sporting events, doesn't matter what it's gonna be. They occur and they end. They occur and they end. That's really what life is all about. You're, if you're looking for happy fairy tale endings or satisfying endings, you're probably not gonna find it, and thus you're going to be constantly unsatisfied. And that is the cycle of suffering that the Buddhists identify as samsara, this cycle of non-satisfaction in life. So that's lesson number two is life doesn't always have satisfying endings. And number three, popularity is a slender read. And that was a quote from, a go from the governor of New York in the 1930s. He told his protege, Robert Moses, and this is one of the best, The Power Broker, it's one of the best books ever written about, well, it's a great biography, but it's a study of power and where it's found, how it's accumulated, and how it's used. But Al Smith says to Robert Moses that popularity is a slender read, meaning you can't let yourself be defined by what others think of you because people are gonna be praising you or they're blaming you. 
And right now for the, for the Buffalo coaching staff, they're being blamed. Whereas last week, they were probably being praised. <laughs> so whether they win or they lose depend, uh, dictates whether they're praised or blamed. Meanwhile, their abilities as coaches haven't changed in the past week. It's just the public's perception based on the outcome of the game, of a couple plays even, has now colored the public's opinion of these very good coaches. You can't let that occur in your own life, in my life. A couple negative comments on my YouTube channel does not really phase me. Years ago it would have because I would have concentrated only on those negative comments and I would have ignored the 99% of comments that are positive and the, the emails that I get about how people's lives have literally been saved by watching this channel. I'm not embellishing that. I get them. So, but I also know that at any time YouTube may change its, its policies and may say, you know, we don't like the content on this channel and shut it down. You never know. Interestingly, the reason I started this channel was because, or the reason I really started to make more videos a couple years ago was because uh, Google decided to do an update on their algorithm and my website, all its traffic went away almost overnight. I went from thousands and thousands of hits to like a hundred hits a day, seemingly overnight because of the algorithm update. I was like, oh my God, where'd my business go? I wasn't getting calls, emails, nothing. And then a couple of months later, the place where I used to do my PRI sessions got hit by an SUV, place got totaled. So that was a couple of months later. So I had nothing left. And my friend said, well, I guess you have to do more videos. And I said, well, yeah, I guess you're right. So, though, so those two events, Google dropping my rankings and then the SUV crashing into the dance studio where I used to do my, do my uh, sessions actually turned out to be the blessing in disguise. Those two terrible events turned out to be two of the best things that happened to me because I had no other choice but to make more YouTube videos and I reached more people. And actually my business is way better now than it's ever been in the past. And I can help more people now than I could ever do in the past. And I can spread the information of postural restoration that exists better than I could through my website. So conditions are constantly changing and success is not always under your direct control. You can control your effort, but you can't control necessarily the timing of things. You can't always control a coin flip. <laughs> There's just variables outside your control that will influence how well you're doing in life. So you can't really get caught up in praise and blame. If you enjoyed this video, could you please like it, share it, or even better, subscribe to the channel. I would highly, highly appreciate it. Thanks.